Hi, I'm Leo, this is Crash Course Jenkins, and today we're gonna build custom images for our Docker agents. So the last week we have done our cloud setup, and uh, now we can run our things in uh, containers. But what's the first thing we need to run a container? An image for that container, right? Jenkins CI repository already has a few common images with Maven, Gradle, and there's some node images as well but we are going to create our own images with our environments, our runtimes that we need. Of course, all of that is only educational, so it's not really going to serve any bigger purpose. So the idea is to give this image all the necessary environment variables, libraries, binaries, executables that it will need to build our code or, well, to perform a task we give it. For that, we will take a base image that we've seen last week and uh, just install things in it and be done with it. There is a couple of ways to go with uh, creating your own images. One way to be like create one single thing that will hold everything you will ever gonna need. This approach is totally fine and uh, well, rather efficient time-wise and resource-wise, if you don't have too much environments and runtimes you have to build. But if you deal with different versions of Maven, Node, Java, Gradle, you name it, it's gonna be a hassle. You will have to separate them somehow. So here comes the second approach. We can just include one thing and one thing only in an image and just run parts of the job inside the container based on this image. This way builds might be more time consuming uh, just because we will have to download those images, uh, switch between containers, but it will make sure that we isolate everything that's possible to isolate. Also, we are going to run our agents in Kubernetes. As you may know, Pod in Kubernetes can have several containers and we are going to make use of that. So in the end, later in the series, we'll create a big, big, beautiful pipeline that will build code in one container, pack it into an image in another container, and then apply it on a third container all in the same pod. Again, it may be more time consuming and even uh, waste a bit of space, but then we can substitute our, for example, Node.js runtime with a different version without affecting our other images. So the Docker CLI we're going to be using in a second container will be the same. So we can reuse the same image in all our builds, all our pipelines. Same goes for kubectl, Terraform, Ansible, Puppet, Chef, or whatever runtime you're using. So without further ado, let's dive deep into Docker files. And the first of them is going to be, well, Docker. We shall take the same image we used the last time. It's a bit different one, but it's just a bit more diverse tag-wise. Then we switch to user root so we can actually install things. And yeah, do not forget to switch back to Jenkins. Otherwise, your container will try to run as root. And well, we do not want that. And we'll just install Docker CLI. Yes. Please note, we do not need the entire Docker environment there. We need only the CLI that will connect to a socket on a different host. Next up is Node, or, well, essentially anything you want for your actual application here. But I'm used to Node.js, so basically I got to the website node.js.org and Googled how to install things on Debian and that's that's the command that's it then we have terraform that's the tool i use a lot uh yeah with this particular thing with hashicorp you want to specify exact version of this tool otherwise it will break it on any update and just for the lulz let's shove all of them together in one image spoiler it's gonna be over a gigabyte now let's head over to jenkins Let's create another pod template for different tasks. For example, I decided to go with all-in-one image. You can see this Docker image already on Docker Hub. I've built and uploaded it. So, well, that proves everything works. And uh, now we have to configure it basically the same way we did with the previous version that was just a pure Jenkins agent. At this point, you might want to add some environment variables here. 
can be done with two ways. One will be just to write the simple YAML as you would write a simple pod definition. Spec container, specify which container, and name value, quite straightforward. Or if you prefer, you can click things in UI, click add environment variable, environment variable, key, value, easy peasy. Now, about those environment variables, you can either specify them in a UI in, those, in this clickety thing that you can just type name and value and be done with it, or you can write them up as a YAML pod manifest like hardcore Kubernetes admin style. Choice is yours. I'm used to writing those YAML files, which is why I'm going with this approach. But what I want to warn you against is do not mix them up. Even if you select this merge functionality, it still may overwrite your environment variables, this clickety thing with your pod YAML. I do not know why this is happening. Maybe I misread documentation, maybe it's a bug, or maybe it's a feature. I don't know. And quite frankly, I don't care. So what we want to make sure is that we stick with one. I prefer YAMLs, which is why I'm sticking with YAMLs. And the rest is pretty much the same as we've seen before. We save it and let's try to run a thing in one of those images. Again, I decided to go with all-in-one. It created our pod uh, with all those shenanigans. And uh, do we have our hello world? Yes, we have executed a short node script. I know this hello world stage of uh, the crash course is taking a while, but bear with me. Of course, you could use any of those images to execute this simple job. But uh, I decided to make use of the Node environment and to execute a Node.js script. All those things uh, will be on GitHub as usual, so you can check it out and try it for yourself if you wish to. And here you go. These are your images for your custom Docker agents. As you might have seen, it's quite straightforward. There's nothing too deep about it, so you can just experiment with it and find the best approach. Next time we'll talk about Jenkins plugins. I've selected a few that are quite essentially for my workflow and uh, well just convenient. And we'll see how and why you want to use them while we create a job to build those images automatically. That's it for today. Subscribe to the channel if you like that and want more and press the like button if you really liked it. I've been Leo. See you next time.